ज्ञानंजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मल ये नस्मै श्रीगुरव नम वंदेह श्रीगुरोतपदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवाश्चरूप सागरजात सह गण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साद्वत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधाकृष्णपादा सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौरकृषे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावता भक्ताभ्यम नमा भक्तिशक्ति श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्मादस्वयतन्वयादित्रत चाथे सुभिज्ञस्वरा तेने ब्रह्म हृदयादिकवे मुयंतूर जय वारी मृदा यथा विनय यो मृषा धामनास्वन सदा निरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीमहि नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास अक्ष He made some good points about behavior of Vaishnava. He said that Vaishnava is harmless person because he is a follower of Vishnu, worshiper of Vishnu, and Vishnu is in charge of protection or maintaining. So he does not cause disturbance. So Vaishnava is also like that, and that's what he said. That what you are doing is not befitting a Vaishnava. And then, if he Dhruva says that I am not fighting for nothing, they killed my brother. So then he took recourse to the whole creation, how it is running, and things are happening. the kind of the time fate will of the law and so on so if you want to work in the material world then you have to see things from an individual point of view if you want you have to be competitive you have to see yourself as a doer and make plans if you want to make your mind peaceful then you have to see the big picture that how this the universe and you are a tiny fellow and you don't have much say and things are just happening so this is the way to keep 
your head cool. This is how renunciation comes. So there are different ways. Whenever we see that somebody is preaching to other person to either dissuade or act in a particular manner, then this technique is used. We are reading that in Mahabharata also. Or everybody is trying to preach to Vishnu Maharaj. Same thing. Some people said it is all karma, it is daiva, fate, time, different factors. And Yudhastra is not to be blamed for anything. And here also we see the same thing that in the last verse it says, Kechit karam vadanti enam sobhavam na parayata Eke kalam pare daivam punshay kamam atapare so Some people say that it is karma, some people say it is kala, some people say it is daiva, sobhava. So, then no one is responsible. <coughs> and if no one is responsible, then you don't fight with somebody, you get angry. You just say that it is time. Just do it. So you are going on the road, somebody comes and hits you, you can get angry at that fellow, or you can think why well, it is time, it is bad. If I had left home one minute late, it would not have happened like this. So this is how he is trying to tell to Dhruva that it is not the mistake of the Yaksha that they killed. So then he says, Avyaktasya prameyasya nana shakti udasya cha navai chikirshi tamtata koveda asya so sambhavan. So he says that Lord who is unmanifest, immeasurable, and has got various potencies in him, it is not possible to know what he wants to do. No one can know the mind of God exactly. Says Tatko Veda, says he is the source of everyone. How can he know? How can he know about? the birth of your mother because when she was born you didn't exist how she grew up you can only hear from her so Swasambhu means your own source so Sri Vishnu Chakrati says that Nanu Esam Vivad Mana Nam Madhye Ko Vyavasthapaka so if someone says that among these people who are always debating with each other, the Nimansakas, the Sankhya, the Lokaitikas and so on, so what is the conclusion? How do we know who is right, who is wrong, who is situated at what level? So Tattat Mool Tattu Vastu No Gyanat So he says that nobody among all of them, no one is right, <coughs> because nobody knows the real thing. Because whatever they are saying, they are all right, but they are not right in absolute sense. So there is also something beyond. Time is also a factor, karma is also there, daiva is also there, somehow is also there, desire is also there. But it is not that it is only desire or only daiva or only time. So why he says that? He says, Avyaktasya kairapi bal buddhyani bhi vyakti kartum asakyasya says that Lord is avyakta, he is unmanifest and therefore nobody can make him manifest by his own power or intellect. Why is that? Because he is apramaya, cannot be known by anything. Pratakshadi Pramanahi Pramatum Asakyasi. So we have various means of getting knowledge. We perceive things. We can also infer. But none of these things are able to know the Lord because He is a He is beyond sense perception.
नाना शक्ति नाम काल कर्म स्वभाव कामादी नाम सोर्स ऑफ वेरियस एनर्जीज इट इज काल कर्म स्वभाव ऑल आर हिज एनर्जीज तस्य एकाम एकाम शक्ति शक्ति तो सो दिस पीपल दे आर डिबेटिंग विद ईच अदर बाय टेकिंग वन ऑफ हिज पावर सो दोज हु आर सेइंग दैट इट इज कर्मा देन दे आर डिसरिगार्डिंग द अदर एनर्जी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ टाइम और स्वभाव and those who are saying it is time they are disregarding the energy in the form of karma or something so he says that this vivad this debate is only among these people but there is no debate in the lord himself because he is the source of all this so if you understand this then there is no fighting or debating तस्य भगवता चिकित्सित कोई नो वेद सेज दैट नो बडी कैन नो द डिजायर वट ही वॉन्ट्स टू परफॉर्म स्वस्य संभव यस्मातम को वेद सेज हाउ कैन यू नो हु इज योर ओन सोर्स एंड कृष्ण सेज दैट ही नोज एवरी बडी नो वन नो हिम It is all the devas, the manus. Nobody knows because he says, "I am not even his deva now." And uh, uh, origin of them, since he is the origin, then how can we know him? And one can know him as much as he reveals himself. When the tam bhishma is there, as bhishma said, "Nahiyas se karhi chhod rajan." कुमान वेद विधित सितम यद विजिज्ञासया युक्ता मुहियंते कवियोपि सो भीष्मा हैड टोल्ड दिस टू विधिष्ठ महाराज इन द फर्स्ट कैंटो दैट और विधिष्ठ नो वन नोज द इंटेंशन ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण दिस कृष्ण इज पर्सनल स्टैंडिंग देयर सो ही वाज रिकॉलेक्टिंग व्हाट ऑल हैपेंड एंड हाउ सो मेनी पीपल वर केल्ड इट वाज क्वाइट रेड Amazing phenomena which had happened in this battlefield of Prakshatra, and so many millions of people assembled and got killed in a period of eighteen days. So this was the real. That when some big match here or happens in India, like this one can get some bahabhat. Mahabharat is famous for such events. So it was such an extraordinary event which happened, and it left so many people wondering what happened, and then trying to grasp it, what caused it. If it is a tsunami or earthquake, then okay, it was earthquake or tsunami. But this was. Arranged by human beings. It was not that some natural calamity happened and people died. They actually fought. They made arrangements for this. So later on, people deliberated on it. That why did it happen? How did the people became so determined for this war? So this must say that actually no one knows what God wants. It is all. His will, and if he wanted, he could, he could have also changed the mind of the ruler. That's all. All you have to do is change the mind of one person, and then we know Mahabharat. And he is he was a key figure. So he says, "Nahi asse karhiche darajan puman vedu vedu sitam." What he wants to do, nobody knows. So no one was able to figure out. Nobody could guess what Krishna will do at a particular moment. 
from the viewers and everybody and playing, talking, eating with them. But what is he planning to do? No one knows. Sometimes he will fight, sometimes he will run away from the battle. Sometimes he will say, no, I will not fight, I will be on the battle also. I will drive the child. So nobody could imagine, no other king could do such a thing that drive a chariot or fire or also run away and go and live inside the ocean. It's amazing that what he did. And so people will try to analyze his character from so many angles. Some people think he was a politician, some people think he was a jnani, karma yogi, god, this, that. All kinds of things, poet, musician, dancer. So he was everything. He started saying that his time, his karma, his soul, he is everything. And because he is everything, it's very difficult to know what he is going to do. So that's why Gisma is saying this. He says, Yad Vijat Gyasa Yajukta Mahiyante Kavya. He says, even the most intelligent people, they are confused about this. So he made Arjuna kidnap his own sister. Any other Kshatriya will be mad. <laughs> like Susupa, remember how angry he was when Krishna did this. But Krishna arranged that Subhadra is kidnapped by Arjuna who was in a sannyasi dress. So even Balram could not figure it out. He was all charged up to fight with Arjuna. And yet the last minute he started looking, but where is Kanaya? I don't see him. <laughs> so he was sitting inside and eating cake. <laughs> so he went to and he asked that you are not coming. And Krishna said, you come where? So this Arjuna has kidnapped Sumandra and said, that's why I am eating cake. <laughs> 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 I am celebrating. <laughs> I am happy. <laughs> so nobody can know. Even Kunti Devi in her prayers in the first canto. She is also saying this, that some people say that he has taken birth to remove the burden of earth, some people say that he has come to kill the demons, some people say he has come to make the Mr. Maharaja's famous, some people say he has come to relieve his parents from the prison. So, some people say he has come to bhakti or vidhana to give bhakti. Nobody knows. So similarly you see past times of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Very difficult. Just today somebody was asking that. He was asking. He took Diksha from Iswarpuri and he took Sanyas from Kesav Bharti. So why did he take Sanyas from Kesav Bharti? He took Diksha from Vaishnava and Sanyas from Dvaitpa. So it's strange. And these things don't match. So what was the need to take sannyas from Kesav Bharti when I gone to Ishwarpuri? So very difficult to understand what is in the mind. And then he didn't behave like a great one sannyasi. All the time he was crying and dancing and jumping, which is completely against him. <laughs> <laughs> and he does not do sannyas, he will never do that. So that's why they were upset with him. He said, what is this guy doing? <laughs> and he took sannyas, but he did not change his name. So he named Chaitanya. So he has taken the name Bharati. When he takes up sannyas in Bharati line, he becomes a Bharati. So it should have become Krishna Bharti and Krishna Chaitanya. So it is very difficult 
to understand tathaja shruti hi therefore the shruti the vedas also say ko adha ved kaiya pravochata kutayata kutayam srishti arvag deva asya visarjanena atko vedayat avabhu he says that who can understand this universe from where it has come how it was created and it is before even the devas were created and it will be destroyed and what will happen after that no and why it is created very difficult to understand so now he comes to the point न चैते पुत्र के भ्रातुर्हंतारो धनदानुगा विसर्ग आदान योस्तात पुंसो दैव कारण सो इस मै डियर बॉय दीज फॉलोवर्स ऑफ कुबेरा दे आर नॉट द किलर ऑफ युअर ब्रदर सो ही ऑल्सो टेक्स एल्टर ऑफ दैव इस कॉज इज ओनली दैव दैव ही कारण इस क्रिएशन एंड destruction the cause for both is daiva <coughs> so why are you killing them it was his time it was his fate or daiva as he translated ishwar sarita maha na chaiti visarga daniyo srishti sandhyani daiva ishwara so daiva is ishwara so daivam chatra panchamam five causes behind every action सृष्टिकर्मीस he protects he destroys it. and yet he is not implicated in anything because he is free from any sankara <coughs> or ego so although he is doing everything but he is not getting any reaction from us न माम कर्माणि विम्पन्ति न मे कर्म फलेस्पि कृष्ण से दैट आई एम डूइंग वर्किंग ऑलवेज बट आई डोंट गेट इम्प्लिकेटेड इन द कर्म व्हाई बिकॉज न मे कर्म फलेस्पि हा आई हैव नो डिजायर फॉर द कर्म फॉल सो कृष्ण नॉट ओनली दैट ही सेज दैट कर्मण्डे अधिकारस्तु मा फलेसु कदाचन बट ही हिमसेल्फ आल्सो फॉलो द स्पेंस He does work without being attached to the fruit. Also, he is the controller of the fruit also, and he gives that advice to us also. And if we follow that, then we also remain free from karma. Iti mami or vijana ti karma bhaves ana bande. The one who knows me like this is not bound by karma. But human beings are that that they don't want the karma phala even without doing the karma. <laughs> If they could get it, they would be happy. So they were just the opposite. So he said that <clears throat> it is he who is doing all this, but he is not bound by guna or karma. Maybe material guna is. अनंकार हेतु तथा तस् निर्लिप्ता पश्चिमेटर एंड नॉट बउंड बैटी वर्ष भूतानि भूतात्मा भूते सो भूत भावना स्वशक्तिया माय आयुक्त सृष्टि अति चपाति चय सो इसे दैट लॉर्ड ही इज द भूतेशा 
He is the controller of all beings. He is the Bhutatma. He is the very essence of everyone. He is the Bhut Bhavana. He is the maintainer of everyone. He says by his own Shakti called Maya, he is creating, destroying and also maintaining it. So he says that Anahankare Hetu Hetu Maha Why the Lord is free from Ahankara pride that is being described in this verse. Because he is everything so pride of what? The pride of doers, it happens when there, there are many people and you have to share something or take credit. But if you are the only one, if you live on an island and you are the only person living there, and when you go to forest and pick some fruits, nice apples, bananas, grapes, and come back to your residence, then you don't feel proud that I did this. Because you feel proud if there is someone around me. So if you are the only one, then where is from? So therefore it says that he is he is everything. He is Bhutatma, he is Bhutex, he is Bhut Bhavana and everything. So how can we be proud of him? Svasaktya maya yukta iti maya bhairangatvena swarup shakti prabhavat tat karyasu tasya naham karo bhavati iti maha. And then moreover he is doing this work by his bhairanga shakti, not by his swarup shakti. So that means he is not directly involved in it. He is very indifferent. So it's like things are happening just by his presence. So that is another reason. Tameva mrittum amritam tata daivam sarvatmanopehi jagat parayanam yasmai baling vishwa srijo haranti Gavo yathave nasi dham yantrita. She says that, my dear boy, you please take shelter of him only, who is death, who is also the immortality. So, he is the shelter of the whole universe, and even the creators of the universe, like Brahma. They carry offerings to him and they function just like a bull is controlled by the root in his nose. So you put a nose rope in the nose of the bull and then you can control like that. Everybody is controlled by him. So he said that just take shelter of him. Nanu evam tvaya prabhodito api ahankaram taktum na prabhavami ityata ahatame. So now if Dhruva says that although you are giving me very nice instructions, but still I am unable to give up my ego, my pride. Sometimes people say like that. Yes, what you are saying is very nice, but I cannot follow it. What to do? I agree with you, but I cannot act upon it. So then he speaks four verses. Upehi prapadyasva. So he says it is possible only if you surrender to him. Tat prapattim vina jnanena ahankar apugamu dusapetiva. So simply by jnana, by knowledge, the ahankar will not go away. It will go away only if one takes shelter of the Lord, if one surrenders. 
otherwise it is not possible. Because you understand with your knowledge, but ahankara remains. So when you give your ahankara to God, which means you accept that I am your servant and I am not independent. So when this feeling of independence is given up, then it is possible. Otherwise, it is not possible. So for that reason, he says that he must surrender. Otherwise, we have this story of the Kumaras in Bhagavatam. They are the realized people. They are the perfected being in the path of jnana or renunciation. Brahman realized. But they also could not give up their ankara. And they were stopped by Jain Vijay. And they became very angry. So there was no reason. It was the duty of Jain Vijay to stop. If someone is going to see the Lord, then the gatekeeper has the right to stop and ask that who are you and where do you want to be. Otherwise, why keep a gatekeeper? If anybody can just barge in any time, then there is no point in keeping somebody at the gate. But they became very angry because they thought that we are sages, we are the sons of Brahma, we are real and who are these people who stop us. So even they were not able to give up their ahinka. But Jain Vijay who were actually only doing their duty, they did not feel proud. They immediately fell at their feet, realizing the greatness of the Kumara and asked for permission. So this is the difference between a jnani and a devotee. How they acted differently. So for that reason he says that the only way you can give up your pride is by surrendering to him. So he says, Tameva Mrityum Amritam Tata Devam Sarvatmana and surrender fully Sarvatmana, not 50-50. That will not work. So Sarvatmana <coughs> in full, complete. And now he is reminding him that if he thinks it is not possible, so he says, it is possible for you. Yapancha varso jananintum vihaya matu sapatnyavat sabhinna marma vanam gata stap sapradek akshama radhale de mudhi param intalokyaha. He says that you are a person who when you were only five years old, you left your mother being hurt by the sharp words of your stepmother and went to forest and worshipped the Supreme Lord by severe austerities. And you got the highest place of residence in this universe. So that means it is possible for you to surrender. If you could do such a thing at tender age of five years, why you cannot do it now? Tantu tam prapanno matkul padmaheva asi itiyayayati. He says that you are actually the lotus born in my dynasty. Because you are so great, he is reminding him. And it's not a difficult thing for you. Pratyanchi Akshani Yoginam Vesmintam. Lord is called here as Pratyagaksha, and who is seen by the inner eyes. Tum Pratyagatmani Tada Bhagavatyanante Ananda Matra Pan Samasta Shaktau. Bhaktim Vidhaya Parama Sankaira Vidya Agnantim Vidhetsa Simamahamiti Prabhudhan So what will happen by taking shelter of the Lord? Then he says that Tum Pratya Gatmani Tada Bhagavati Anante Lord who is 
seeing with the inner eyes who is Bhagawan, who is the Lord of all the opulences, who is unlimited and who is pure bliss and who is the source of all potencies. <coughs> says that by performing bhakti to him, parmam bhakti, pure devotion unto him, then your avidya granthi will be cut asunder completely. This avidya in the form of mamaham, that I am my. So this is the basis of ignorance that we identify with the body first and then we identify with the objects and relatives which are related to the body and then that is the samsara. So we remain in this samsara, this world of I and my. So it starts with the body and then it extends. My family, my parents, my relatives, my country, my birthplace, my house. So then I make my own world. And it is all around me. <coughs> in the center. And these things are around me. So these are all the bondage, they are ropes. These relations <coughs> of my, whom you know, I consider as my, they are bound to me. So like you have a pole and with that pole you tie many different types of animals, birds, beasts. So they all rotate around it. And sometimes they will fight with each other. So like that I am the center and then I have many living beings, objects around me and sometimes they are fighting and they are together and I am trying to sort it out. And they are going around me and they are also getting entangled and making me more and more entangled. So this he calls as Avidya Granthi, the knot of ignorance. And Prarudam means very tight, <coughs> completely entangled. Sometimes there are simple knots. You pull it, it's open. And sometimes there are gardens knot. But you cannot figure out how to open it. So this is gardens knot. And it can be cut by the sword of bhakti. Bhakti with a high parmam sankai. So then it is completely removed. Tameva samprati anvicha. She says, now you go and take shelter of him. Alam tava vyavaharika bhadra abhadra bhavanayati. She says, stop all this divisions of this is good, this is bad, this is nice, this is horrible. All this give up this idea. Nacha tatra anyasam iva tau prayasa. Don't act like others. So everybody should act according to one's own platform. You cannot act like others. We have to know ourselves and then act accordingly. So he is reminding Dhruva that your platform is not of ordinary people who are entangled in envy and jealousy and family relations. Why would he say like this to my brother or my wife? If I can insult like this, I will take you. So you can rise above this. Atmani Tanmansi Mukta Vigrahe Nirvirodhe Visheshin Vatsalyat Vritani Vatsam Atmadri Pratyak Vishkisam Yasmina Nishta Sati So he said that he is the Pratyak Atmani seen in the 
mind and without any obstruction and vatsalyat krit nivasam atma krit because of his affection he is situated inside and yasmin anvishta sati ime satru mitra deva bheda yatra tadam bhedam jagat asata vadram rochkam eva pratiyat तमेन मंगमात्म मुक्त विग्रह जपाश्रित निर्गुण अक्षर आत्मीक्ष विमुक्त शेल्टर ऑफ दैट लॉर्ड हू इज निर्गुण फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल द गुण हू इज वन हू इज इंपेरिसेबल हू इज द लॉर्ड एंड लिबरेटेड and once you realize him then these divisions of good and bad they will go so we are making all this divisions this duality exists only when we see things from our own perspective <coughs> so this is what he has been trying to show in this that you can see things either from the perspective of the lord you can have a cosmic vision or you can have the atomic vision you can see it from your own point of view and then you see the dualities <coughs> this is my body this is my heart this is my reality or you see from lord's point of view that everything belongs to him he is the supreme <coughs> He is the source of everything. He is the controller. He is the master. So when you see it from that point of view, then the, there is no duality. And everything is one. Everything is under one big umbrella, one big family. <coughs> so then there is no distinction. So sometimes we have to use both. If you want to function in the world, you also have to have your own individuality, otherwise you become a sannyasi. But sometimes this other vision is also necessary to keep the mind in balance, because many situations come in life which cause disturbance to us, and then we become too much. entangled so that is also not good <coughs> because if he has to follow all this then definitely he cannot be the king as a king he has to take many actions so he can take all these actions only if he also sees things from the local perspective if he only sees from the global view then there is no need to act then he just become the nose to become a witness to everything <coughs> everything is flowing nobody is doing anything wrong or right everything is right so you just have vision of the supreme lord and all this bhedam asat prati all these divisions they are illusory they are not real because we have made the divisions this is india this is pakistan this is sri lanka this is bangladesh all these divisions where are they if you will go along and see from the plane or from satellite you don't see anything like that so we have made these divisions and then we are fighting so the divisions are necessary for management and proper functioning but if you don't have any divisions then okay today i am living in this house and tomorrow i go to another room somebody comes here 
So I paid the bill here today and there also I have to pay the bill. <laughs> and I keep on moving and paying bill for everybody. So for practical sake we also need to make decisions <coughs> but at the same time we should also have the global vision so that we don't get <coughs> envious, jealous and become controlled by anger. All these things which are obstacle in my path to give up these things, this global vision is necessary. This universal vision or cosmic vision not remain completely entrenched only in one's own self. But to perform my duty properly to function, I also have to make distinctions. I have to have my personality so that I can function. So now because Dhruva was very much engaged in this vision of his brother being killed by his yaksha, he went overboard. So he's trying to bring him back to normal. That's what he's doing. It says Tada Pancha Varsha Vayashi. So this is the universal vision when it is dark, everything becomes one. No divisions, no duality, everything is lost. He said, Tada Pancha Varsa Vaisi Kimidam Smarasi Iti Say that when you are five years old, then do you remember something? What you did? Avidya Agvin thing is excessive. So he, he says that by doing this bhakti, you will cut the knot of Avidya. So Vishnu Chakrati he comments on this because he used future tense that he will cut the knot of Avidya and it looks like that Dhruva Maharaj was still in Avidya. So how is it possible? Because he realized the Lord. So then there is in Sanskrit in the future and present in past, they can also be used in the sense of nearness, that if you are going to do something in future immediately, you can also use the present tense on it. Like you say, I go, so when you say I go, it may mean I will go. And similarly, if you say I will go, it means I am going now. So he said, Abhigya Vachane Lid. But sometimes the Lit Lakar or future tense is also used in the sense of 
recognizing something which is already existing. So, Vidya Granthim Vibhetsyasi, it means that you are not is already cut, not that you are going to cut the meat. Bhut Kale Eva Lit Vyabhinna Ityat. So, this Lit Lakar, which is used in future tense, has been used here in the past tense. And she has already cut the knot. Sayacharo sambhadram te prati pam suyasa param sutena bhuyasa rajan nayadena yatha mayam. So he says that you please control your anger. And just as by taking medicine, a disease is cured. So whatever instruction I have given to you, then with that you control your anger. Because anger is a very big obstacle on the path of progress. And may there be all auspiciousness for you. So he is blessing him now. So he actually bhadramte pratipam sreyasam So anger actually is a very problematic thing. And especially in spiritual life. Because what happens is that if you get angry, then your mind becomes very disturbed. Then it is not possible to fix the mind on the Lord. An angry mind cannot be fixed. Angry mind is not capable of meditating or doing Sravan Kirtan. These things are not possible. You cannot hear properly when you are angry. You cannot meditate. You cannot chant. You can't do anything. Else. So this has to be given up. And he has given instructions for that. Basically, this is what he was trying to tell him: how to get rid of anger. So all this. Big preaching which you did, time, is, everything is by time, by Lord, by this, by that. Somehow get rid of your anger. Because really speaking, if you see the mind, then a thought arises in the mind. Now when thought is arising in the mind, it is just a thought. And then you catch that thought and you say, this is my thought. And when you catch the thought and you think this is your thought, then the problem starts. So, but if you just watch the thought and don't think this is my thought, because there is nothing which belongs to you. First of all, you are not the mind. So, how can it be your thought? So, when we hang on to this idea that this is my thought, then we get caught in this network and then we start talking, having a monologue within the mind. We either start thinking of the past or start thinking of the future. And the thought is a desire and then you start planning about future, how you are going to fulfill this desire. If the thought is related to something past, then you start daydreaming. If thought is related to some other person who said some nice thing to you, who praised or criticized, then you start arguing with that person. Why did he say like this? So you are not like this. So then you get completely carried away by this whole thing. And you waste your time and your energy which is meant to serve the Lord. Uselessly. So better find some ways and means to get out of it. 
that is the technique which is being shown here. So that's why I say that Rosam Prayach, Sanyacha Rosam. Sanyacha Rosam Bhadram Prayach. So it's control your anger, you will clear the auspiciousness, it's blessing you. And he says this anger is a very big obstacle. So that's why Krishna says that this anger, calm and growth, these are very dangerous things. Because they fully occupy us. They don't leave any chance for anything else. When you are occupied, when you have an intense desire for something, especially for the opposite sex, or you are very angry, then your whole being, like he is saying that you perform bhakti with your whole being, Sarvatmana. So in calm and Krodha, we are actually Sarvatmana, not partly. When we do bhakti, then we do partly only. If you are chanting, you are not chanting Sarvatmana. Little bit mind here, most of the mind running here. <coughs> when you are angry, you are fully there. Not that you are little bit here and you are thinking something else peacefully. No, you are just angry. Or if you are disturbed by karma, then you are fully disturbed by it. So just as they occupy our mind completely, like that our mind should be occupied by bhakti. So how to do that? That is possible. First you have to release your mind from the clutches of this calm. Calm is a crowd, is a rajogun sami. Mahasano Mahapatma Vidya Inam Yadam It says that this calm and crowd and these are the big eaters. They completely devour you. And they are very sinful. Because they only lead you to the wrong thing. So this is the real enemy. Vidya Inam Yadam This complete biggest enemy or destroyer. So we have to get rid of this enemy somehow. So he gave some technique because it is all in the mind. So from Sankhya we know that there is Mahatattva and from Mahatattva comes Ahankara which gives me the feeling of I. So this thought is generating in math and then I catch on to it and it becomes my thought. So you can just imagine that this thought is not in, it is not my thought. Because really speaking we have no control over thought, it just happens. Thoughts are coming and going, like the wind is blowing. So when I breathe, then this is my breath, right? Then you release that breath and after some time it is going inside you then it is your breath. Right? Just one minute ago what you, what, which was your breath is my breath now. So now suppose I hang on to that and this is my breath, how can you have this? I am going to kill you with my breath. So this breath is coming in and going out and now it is my breath then it is your breath and it is somebody else's breath and we are all breathing. Here. So like that thought is also coming. It is my when I say this is my thought. Okay, give it up. It's like your breath is gone. If you hang on to your breath you will die. You also have to release it. So just as you release your breath, and this way you can live. Like that also release your crazy thought. It is a good thought, devotional thought, hang on to it, no problem. But if it is related with anger, greed, lust, then give it up because it will kill you. Like breath, if you hold on to it, you will die. So therefore he says that, Sanyat Sarosam Kadram Te Pratipam Sreya Samparam Yan Sutena Bhuya Saraya Agadeena Yatha so just what you have heard, by that you try to understand and just as the disease cures, disease is cured by medicine, so take this medicine. It's 
is good medicine.